What's up, people? Welcome back. How are you? I am doing pretty well. Thank you for asking. So today's video is going to be a full production breakdown of my recent commercial for Copa. If you do not know what I'm referring to, um, last week I put out a full behind the scenes of this commercial. So you get to see every little detail of what went into making this commercial on production day. But today I decided to do something a little different and talk about what it took to make it in pre-production. And I'm not really going to be talking about the cinematography because on this project I had a different role. Uh, yes, I was the DP, but also I was the executive producer. And the reason why I wanted to talk a little bit about the pre-production side of this commercial is because normally as just a DP, I don't really get to see the full scale of what it takes to create a commercial. But in this one in particular, I was a part of every single detail that went in to making it. And I think it's really important to share some of these things. And I've never really done anything of this budget size before. And I've never done anything with this size crew, cast, uh, locations from a producing standpoint. So I think it's going to be really, really interesting for you guys to hear my perspective as a first time EP slash DP and how we were able to do this and the team that I brought on to also help me make this happen. So I'm really excited to dive into this breakdown. And my hope is just to inspire one of you out there that is afraid of, you know, chasing your dreams or trying something new. Um, yeah, this was this project was definitely the biggest undertaking I've I've had in a long time. Uh, it was definitely scary. Um, a lot of pressure, but uh, with the right team around you, supporting you, you can really get anything done. And regardless of if you succeed or if you fail, you can almost guarantee, I actually can guarantee that you will never regret giving yourself a shot and trying. So without further ado, let's dive into the breakdown of the making of this Copa commercial. So the first thing of making a commercial is just having a basic idea and concept that you want to create. and. I did. I had a basic idea, I had a basic concept, basic, basic location ideas, but then I approached Colin Tunney, who again was the director for this project, similarly to the one in Victrola. Um, him and I have been working together very closely lately, and I brought him on again for this project because of his creative vision, his enthusiasm, and just the way that he works and the way that we work together is, um, we work really well together. So I wanted to bring him onto this one, and I approached him with this basic pitch of what I wanted. And he essentially took that, you know, little, little minuscule idea and he created a whole story around that. And that came across in this treatment. The first page is the cover page with the logo and the name of the commercial. And if you look at the background, it's got a similar color as the logo. Pages two through six are a description of what the commercial is gonna be about. It's essentially the story in a written form. This is really important because when you're sharing the treatment with either the client or different crew members or people that you're trying to pitch this to, you wanna be able to essentially describe what the commercial is about in a way that people can understand. And then following that, if you look, the next bunch of pages are visual references. So being able to see the written story and the written concept with visuals following it is really important for someone to be able to actually fully encompass the idea of what you're trying to accomplish. So we were able to put a lot of really great references into this treatment, and a lot of it were divided by color, tonality, composition, location ideas. And a quick note is when you're creating a treatment and you have reference images, your reference images aren't supposed to be exactly how you're going to shoot them. They're, they're supposed to be used as a base idea. They're supposed to be used as a reference and an inspiration. And that was essentially what this was used for. So following all the still references, we created a little bit of a wardrobe page. The reason why we wanted to create a wardrobe page is also for client feedback as well. If you'll notice in the treatment, a lot of the wardrobe was kind of more of a fall winter theme. This was our initial concept, initial idea, especially because we were shooting in March. It wasn't super warm out, but with the client feedback after looking at the treatment, they wanted to push this more towards summer. So we had to change the wardrobe look to be a bit more of a summer feel. And honestly, that's the whole point of creating a treatment like this is to be able to collaborate and get feedback. So from the original idea of the wardrobe looking at like fall and winter, we ended up pivoting to more of a summer theme, which ended up being way better in the end for the final product. And the last page is just a little note on props and things that we're gonna need to get in order to make this thing happen and look the way that we want it to. So to recap on the treatment, one thing that I really wanna emphasize here is branding. When you're pitching to a company or you're just showing a treatment to a company that's already hired you for a job, I am a big believer in really just encompassing the total brand identity, essentially. So if you notice throughout the treatment, a lot of the colors, the tonality, 
all matches the logo and theme of the brand. This just makes for a cohesive treatment and a cohesive theme and idea that you're pitching to your client or giving them uh, instead of it being a jumbled mess. And everything in my mind needs to be a very cohesive piece to be able to present. So following the step of creating the treatment, I knew that it was time to really start making moves and really making it happen. So with a small budget of $11,000 that I was given to create this project, I approached Colin and kind of pitched him on the idea of not really paying ourselves for this project. And for a lot of you that are watching this, you might be like, why would you not want to get paid for this? You should always get paid for this. And you're absolutely right. At the end of the day, we do need money to live. But if you're in a position to be able to consciously say, okay, if I don't pay myself, how much money would that free up in the budget to be able to give to the crew, give to the rest of the production, give to art? How much can I give up? How much can Colin give up as the director in order to free up X amount of dollars in the budget? And we both agreed that this project has potential to be really, really great, an amazing piece for our portfolio, for me as a DP, and for him as a director. So without our rates, without some of the gear rates that are included, we had $11,000 to fully invest into the project. We truly believed that the potential of this project would outweigh the rate that we would give ourselves. So we decided, no pay for us, we're gonna reinvest all the money back into the project to make this the best thing that we can. So the first crew member that I brought on was a producer. Her name is Steph Lee, and I've worked with her a ton, and I knew that she would be a great fit for this project. The reason why I wanted to bring on an additional producer is because I had two roles executive producer and DP. And also, since this is my first time kind of creating a project of this scale, this size, with a lot of logistical things, I needed somebody to help me and guide me through this process, as well as delegate a lot of the things that I technically didn't need to do, so I can focus on the creative side and be a DP as well. So for pre-production, now that I had Steph on board and Colin as well, I needed to create something that would essentially be a like home base for this project. So I created a mill note board for this project and due to my you know extreme organization it was the perfect place for us to create this kind of hub or home base there were so many things that i added to this mill note page all these different boards to-do lists and it was just a great home base for all of us to kind of go to to make sure that we're staying on track and to be able to communicate to make sure that each of us are doing our specific jobs and all the tasks are getting done uh, on time and effectively so a few of the conversations i had with steph really involve the logistical side. It's like, what was the budget? How much money is getting allocated to crew? How much money is getting allocated to cast, food, locations, equipment, etc.? cetera? Um, we also talked about doing a location scout. We also talked about getting permits and understanding the fees, insurance, all the things that go into the, the background of a project. Sorry, plant. Amongst those conversations, we created a schedule for a location scout. And if you've seen a video of mine, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I talked about the importance of a location scout. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't bring on my gaffer and key grip for location scout due to budgetary restrictions, but still having the location scout was imperative for us to be able to lock down a specific location for the liquor store and for the beach scene. On the location scout, I think we visited like five or six different liquor stores, we visited a couple different beaches. And if we didn't do this, we weren't able to make an accurate decision on what the best location would be for this project. So we ended up all agreeing on this one location for the liquor store. And here are some location photos that I took to provide to my gaffer and key grip and all the people that needed to see it, especially the production designer as well. Um, and here are some other location photos for the beach that I took as well. Once we were able to lock in those two locations, a few things had to happen in order to seriously lock them in. Normally as a DP, I don't really think about permits. I don't really think about the fees that go along with it because usually that's production side. That's just, that's they take care of it. I know the location, I show up and I shoot it. But as the EP, I also had to talk to Steph about what it looked like to get the permits. How much is all of that gonna cost? Why do we need the permits? And after a bit of education and she taught me a lot of this stuff, Getting a permit is super important when you have a production of this scale. Because when you have 30 people on the sidewalk or on the street setting up, you don't want the police to come and shut you down in the middle of production and you can't even get the commercial done and you still have to pay everybody. So spending a little money and getting the permits is imperative to having a smooth production day without having the worry of being shut down. 
And this was something that I agreed upon and I thought was extremely necessary. All right, so let's hop back into the Milanote board real quick. As you'll notice, I created quite an extensive to-do list for all the things I needed to get done and all the things that uh, essentially are needed as reminders to get done. So a lot of these items aren't really based in order of ascending or descending order of importance or whatever. They essentially just are written in how I thought of them or how they came up during the day or in what process during pre-production. Just having a list here and a checkbox was super important for all of us, me, Steph, and Colin, to be able to look at and make sure that we are checking all the boxes and getting every little important thing done before shoot day. So the first two boards includes cast and crew names, emails, phone numbers. Obviously, I'm not gonna show you their actual names and emails and phone numbers and all that stuff, but here's an example of how I organized it. And this was a great way for us to look at who we had on board, their emails, their contact info. And this was really great for Steph when creating the call sheet to have all that info laid out so she could just copy and paste it right in. Also including that was just food restrictions, allergies, and the board for catering. We were able to have all the people's names and what they wanted to eat, any food restrictions, allergies. Uh, so that just kept that super organized as well. And when we were ready to actually make the order for lunch, everything was just a copy and paste and just send right over to the caterer. So real quick, I just wanna talk about budget a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna show you the exact breakdown of the budget just because there are specific rates in there for people and I don't really wanna get into that too much uh, just due to privacy and all those things. But like I said, we had $11,000 to allocate for this project. And for a lot of you, that's a lot of money. And a lot of you may never have done a project of that size before, and a lot of you are sitting here like, I eat $11,000 budget for breakfast. And I'm like, all right, sick, bro. Jeez. Um, but what was really important was being totally transparent about where the money should be allocated to. And for me, the most important thing was getting the best crew possible and paying them their day rates and any equipment that they needed to bring on. So majority of the money that went into this budget went to crew. Next, a lot of the money went into cast, making sure that they got paid effectively as well. The next big thing too is allocating money for food. And that's not just for lunch, that's crafty, that's getting water, snacks, uh, everything, coffee runs. So allocating a good amount of money for that, I think I allocated maybe like 650 or something like that for food, lunch, crafty. And that's really important because you don't want a hungry crew, you don't want a hungry cast. Um, hangry people are not fun to be around. Um, I think when we wrapped on set, I had so much food left over, but I'd rather have food left over than not have any food at all. So for me, saving money and allocating a good amount for crafty and food is so important. The other thing we had to allocate money for was the permits, fees, location stuff. We also had to allocate money for equipment from a rental house. We had to allocate money for insurance. So all of these things add up in the end. And we tapped out $11,000 and I used every last penny of it to make this project what it was. So that was the sacrifice that Colin and I made for the sake of the entirety of this project. And uh, I, I truly think that it was well worth it. All right, so moving on to the creative side of things. Colin and I created a pretty extensive shot list. Uh, when I say we, I mean Colin was the one that initially created the shot list for all the different scenes. And then once he was done creating it, we came together to kind of collaborate and essentially tighten it up. Because when you first create a shot list, you're thinking of every different possible composition, angle, you're thinking of all the possibilities in the world. And me as a DP, it's my job to elevate the director's vision. It's my job to think of a better alternative. It's my job to think of a, a different composition or a type of camera movement, or how can we combine shots essentially. And I also had the hat of an EP as well. So I had to keep in mind budget. I had to keep in mind time, schedule, um, all the different things logistically that goes into a production day. Um, and even though these are things that I think of as a DP, um, as a DP, I'm thinking a very narrow uh, way, you know, in, in a sense of understanding my budget. But as an EP, I had a budget of the entire project. So I had to think about that as well. So as you notice, this shot list is quite extensive. And this shot list in particular is done in story order. So essentially how this is written is how the edit is going to play. After we felt really comfortable and confident in this shot list, what I did was took the liberty to create a separate shot list for the shooting schedule. And the reason for doing this is because we had to shoot out of order. And the reason for doing that is because in the location, shooting the first scene was here, for example. 
the next scene was over here, for example, and then the fifth shot was back over here. So shooting out of order only made sense for our lighting team, for the camera team, for production and schedule, because if we went from here to here to here back to here, the lighting team would have had to change everything all the time, and that would have just eaten up so much time. So as a DP, I had to make sure that the shooting schedule made sense relative to where we were in the location to make sure that we weren't changing the lighting too much and we were essentially just moving from like here and slowly making our way down to our final spot. And I'm just referring to the liquor store, but that makes sense throughout whatever you're shooting. Now, if I could just fast forward when we were on set, uh, we had quite an ambitious shot list here. And we ran into a bit of a pickle where we were getting crunched on time. So having this shot list though, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of locking things down in pre-production, like having a great foundation in pre-production. So when you are in production on set, you have a great base, you have room for flexibility and room for uh, being able to change things and being able to pivot. So when we ran into some issues where we were running in time crunch, by looking at the shot list, we were able to see the edit in our mind, be like, okay, we actually don't need this one. I think we can combine this shot, this one in the edit. We can cut it here. Let's just move on to the next scene. And then for the next location, let's cut these two and ex extend our time here. Um, but that is all just based on collaboration and being willing to pivot in order to make the day essentially. In terms of communication with the crew, um, as a DP, my normal conversation with my gaffer and key grips started in pre-production when I had the location scout photos. I would share the location photos and also share the shot list that we had. We would spend some time looking at the location photos and the shot list and essentially map out where each shot's going to be. And I also created a little bit of a lighting diagram for uh, some of these scenes and even though they're not specific for lighting, it was a great way for us to kind of look at where the camera's positioned for each scene to be able to help determine and inform where the lighting's gonna be. For production design, Kyle and I really spent some time with Liz, our production designer, talking about the overall aesthetic and vibe that we were going for. And a lot of this really played in the beach scene. Uh, but going back, the liquor store, a lot of what we really needed to get done was turning all of the liquor bottles and all of the cans, everything in the liquor store that had a brand on it, because we didn't have the money to pay for the Coors Light or the Heineken bottle. So we had to turn every single bottle and can backwards so you don't see the logo and then be able to put posters up and be able to actually create an environment that was relative to Copa and be able to show some branding within the liquor store. But going to the beach scene, we really wanted to create a really cool bonfire atmosphere. So we really talked about some different inspirations and we saw some things on Pinterest that we like. Um, so we found some really cool lanterns on uh, Amazon. We found some string lights that she had. Uh, she brought a really cool cooler and we also asked some of the crew and extras if they could bring some beach chairs. A few of my friends had surfboards. So a lot of it was based on collaboration, uh, but having these discussions in pre-production with art is so important to be able to get the final look that you're going for. I say this all the time as a DP, what you're shooting is so important. If what's in front of the lens doesn't look good, you can only do so much with lighting. You can only do so much with camera movement and lensing, whatever. Art is like one of the most important things. And it, it, besides wardrobe, make like everything's important. But if that scene didn't have the lanterns, if it didn't have the string lights, if it didn't have the fire, the ch it would have just been a beach with people. It would have changed the entire look of the commercial. So that's just a testament to Liz and her team, and also just the communication collaboration that we took in pre-production to ensure that we were getting everything that we needed for that scene. So hopefully you made it through this video. I know that this was a lot of information, and I also know that there's a ton of details that I did not go over um, because we would be here for an hour. But my goal was just to create a general overview of what it took in pre-production to actually create this project. Um, my first time as an EP DP combo, uh, I truly loved it. I really did. There were so many, there were so many times where I felt stressed though. There were so many times where I doubted myself and I didn't think I could do it. But at the end, when we wrapped, I just sat there and was like, we did it. Um, and that's just a testament to a team, uh, pe people surrounding you that truly want to succeed and uh, just create amazing things. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I hope that this just inspires one of you to be able to go out and do something that you're afraid of.
um, because I know that if I didn't commit to this, I would have regretted not doing it because the final product was worth every ounce of stress, every ounce of fear, and uh, every bit of just uncertainty that I felt. It was worth it, 100%. And even if it didn't turn out the way it did, I'm proud that I committed to this, and I'm proud that I was able to bring a team together that was able to commit to something like this. So yeah, that's all I got for you today. If you haven't checked out the behind the scenes video, go to my profile, check out the most recent video before this one um, and check it out. It's about a 30 so minute behind the scenes. You get a real in-depth look of production day, how we created all the different looks. And at the end of that video, you get to see the actual final commercial. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking that out. Um, again, as always, I truly appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, we're growing and um, I'm just, I'm finding so much joy and uh, just passion doing this. And I hope to continue to do it and hopefully continue to inspire all of you out there. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for you today. Have a great day, everyone. See you next time. Peace out.